in the Temple of the Rants, where I rant about whatever my $15 a month plus pay that. $15 a month plus patrons want me to rant about. You can get one of these by being one of those. This one's for Tickle Soup, who says, rant about cry porn anime. Man, so what I think characterizes cry porn to me is when I feel as though the purpose of something I'm watching is to make me cry. Where I feel like what is first and foremost is not trying to tell a compelling story which just so happens to make you cry because it is, you know, touching subject matter, but crafting the audiovisual experience in such a way where its purpose is to elicit tears. And there's a lot of ways you can do this by sort of manipulating your audience. Uh, you know, if you use swelling music, if you show characters crying, if you have, like, you know, really emotional performances on the part of the actors, like, there's a certain amount of, uh, of that that is, or, you know, very vibrant visuals. It's difficult to not cry sometimes. Like, as human beings, we have natural, instinctive reactions to certain things. And I think that there are ways that anime can make you cry without feeling anything. And I first had this realization when I was watching Clannad. Uh, and I know I've told this story before, but, uh, you know, I was watching that show and I really didn't care about it. Like, I initially I had dropped it like four or five episodes in because I just thought it was, it was very similar to, you know, Canon and Air, which I'd been a fan of each of those shows, but I just watched them earlier that year and I thought that this one was more watered down than those, more repetitive, it wasn't moving at a satisfying rate plot-wise, so I had dropped it. I came back to it after the first season ended and tried to marathon it. And when I got up to episode 9, I was bawling like a fucking baby during that episode, even though I didn't care about the characters at all. I had thought Fuka was kind of annoying, didn't really, I was like zoned out for the like parts of the arc where they were actually discussing what was going on with her. So I kind of was even confused during the episode about what exactly was going on. But there's these scenes where it's like this long protracted sequence of the camera pans across and all the colors go vibrant and this music swells and all the characters are fucking losing their shit and everybody's yelling and crying and I was just like, oh my god, what's happening? It's so sad. And then I literally couldn't remember what had happened, like, a few days later. And I was just like, man, that is such a weird feeling to know that, like, I was just, like, having a physiological reaction to the things going on, but not out of feeling something emotionally, you know? And I've had that in various anime. In fact, I mean, it's, it's really the easiest way to get me to cry is, like, if it's through that kind of reaction. But, like, there's very few anime where I've cried from just feeling something so powerfully. The last episodes of Eureka 7 always get me. And, yeah, there are moments that are, like, the obvious cry moments where the, you know, it, it, it's still presenting that way. But it's when you're thinking about why you've reached this moment. That's when the tears start flowing, you know, and they don't stop because you just keep thinking back on it and it just keeps making you cry more. The more you're like, wow, I can't believe they finally made it. I can't believe these characters have finally progressed to where they were trying to get to. I'm so happy for them. I'm so happy that we've made, you know, that, that the show has come to this point, um, you know. So, like, I do think that... It's not that I'm not saying it's admirable to be able to make somebody cry. Like, it takes a lot of technical skill to understand how to push those buttons, to know what to show on screen, what music to play, you know. But, like, I don't value having just an emotional response. Like, the fact that something made me cry doesn't make it good to me. It just is like, oh, well, you know, that's what they were going for, is to make me cry, but, like, it doesn't, I don't think about it again, I don't care about the stuff that actually went on in the show, um, you know, it doesn't leave a lingering impression, it just makes me think, oh, that show made me cry. And so many times I've hear, heard people talk about shows where literally the fact that it made them cry is their reasoning for why they thought it was good. They say, oh, 
you know, not a lot of shows have made me cry, but this one made me cry, man. That's how powerful it is. And it's like, well, what about it made you cry? Why, you know, was it, was it really that you felt that strongly about the plot? Or do you even remember why you were crying? Or do you just remember crying, you know? Um, like, I, I used to see, like, dramatic movies with my mom, and she'd, like, literally be like, it was a pretty good movie, but it didn't even make me cry, and I was expecting to cry. And I'm like, who, who gives a fuck? Why do you care if you cried or not? What the hell does that have to do with the movie being good? Um, but, you know, maybe some people just want to have that that more, like, roller coaster type experience. You know, the same kind of people who want to see uh, scary movies because they want to to jump and feel it, it, thrilled and exhilarated by media as though they were at a theme park so that they can come away and say, oh, it made me cry, man. Oh, it made me jump. I was so scared. Like, that's what they take away from it. And uh, that, to me, is like just very shallow and not an interesting takeaway from something. Um, so, you know, when I, when I see works that I feel like their, their purpose is to make me cry as opposed to you know, to actually endear me to characters so that I will cry even when the scene isn't doing all that stuff. If I'm crying just from the thought of what happens to these characters, that's when I know I've, I've seen something really well written. 